Hey, it's April with the Possible Diet, and today I am making a cake to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Um, so one of my favorite films, which is completely outdated and probably culturally inappropriate, is Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Um, I'm half Irish and half Filipino, and I grew up watching that film believing in leprechauns, like having a crush on Sean Connery, God rest his soul. Um, and it's such a quirky film that every time St. Patrick's Day rolls around, like I watch it just for nostalgic reasons. And this is a cake that I make. Um, I've made a lot, actually. I make it for people's birthdays because it's just like fun and easy to make. I call it a mountain cake. So it's my Mount Nakhnashiga cake in honor of Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Um, and I make this cake, uh, with some ingredients that are, you know, like chemical and not chemical. So, um, a lot of people, they want to go low carb, but they don't like the idea of eating artificial sweeteners. And that's totally fine. If it's not for you, it's not for you. There are some options that you have for products that are, um, you know, they don't have artificial sweeteners, but they are lower carb than full sugar. Uh, whenever I make a recipe and I'm trying, I usually try to reduce the carbs first. I don't try to eliminate the carbs by replacing them with something completely artificial. And I find that especially in baked goods, because of the browning effects of sugar, it's really hard to get a good texture that you're familiar with, um, or even a texture that's palatable without real sugar. Um, which is why you have not seen a chocolate chip cookie on my channel yet. I'm still trying to crack that one. One of the products that I love um, is Smart Sugar, which is made by Miss Jones Baking Company. Um, you can reduce sugar by 50%. This is actually just cane sugar, chicory root fiber, tapioca syrup, tapioca starch, and monk fruit extract. So it does have some monk fruit, but like it doesn't have stevia, it doesn't have NutraSweet, it doesn't have sucralose. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with artificial sweeteners or erythritol upsets your stomach, you can use Smart Sugar. Um, it's a great substitute. I, for this cake, make my own substitute with agave inulin powder, which is a slightly sweet prebiotic. Um, it has the texture of just plain old powder. This one comes from agave. You can get inulin powder from chicory root, like Miss Jones does, or you can get it from Jerusalem artichoke. This agave inulin powder has a slightly sweet taste to it, so that's why I use it. And I combine it one part of inulin powder with two parts of coconut sugar um, to make kind of like a lower glycemic. It's not low glycemic, it's still sugar, but it is a lower glycemic sugar blend. Um, so we, and I, I only use about a half a cup of this in this cake mix. So um, it's not low carb, it's reduced carb. So where like a slice of this cake might normally have, I, I don't know, it depends on the size of the slice and the cake and everything, but it's, it's gonna have about two thirds of the carbs. I also use almond flour, which is lower carb than regular wheat flour. So if you have a recipe that you really, really like, and you just wanna try and reduce the carbs in it, try that. Try using a little less sugar, using a mix of sugar and you know smart sugar. Try using almond flour or a mixture of almond flour and regular flour. Um, that's how I come up with these recipes is I, I try different things and I see what works and what doesn't work. And I'll be honest with you, the first time I made this cake, I had to throw it away because it was, ineb it was inedible. It was not good. Um, I was sad. I don't even have a compost pile to toss it in. Um, but, you know, I just don't waste calories, so I'm not going to eat a cake that doesn't taste good. So, let's start. Uh, super easy to make. You mix the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients, and then you mix them together. So for the dry ingredients, I have a cup and a half of almond flour. I have a third cup of cocoa. Um, the original recipe for this was like a fourth cup of cocoa and two teaspoons or tablespoons of Dutch cocoa, but I just use this double Dutch dark, dark cocoa blend from King Arthur. It's really good. It makes the cake taste like an Oreo cookie. Um, and then I use a third a cup of it. And then we want to get our half a cup of our coconut sugar inulin fiber um, blend or a half a cup of smart sugar if you prefer to not 
get super fancy and you just want to make life easy. Um, you can also use a half a cup of your favorite uh, sugar-free baking sweetener. I, I do like Bestie. That's like a pretty, that's a pretty good one. Um, you can find it at wholesomeyum.com um, or the link to it at wholesomeyum.com. It bakes up pretty well. I think it's an erythritol allulose blend, um, but there's a lot of people making uh, sugar, sugar-free baking substitutes. King Arthur makes one as well that's pretty good, um, but they, they are pricey, so use whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Give this a stir, and then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt and two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder, not baking soda. So, you, if you, if the teaspoons looks high in a recipe, odds are it's probably baking soda, or it's probably baby, baking powder, not baking soda, because um, baking powder has like soda and then some other stuff in it. I just use the aluminum free kind. So once this is kind of done, um, we're gonna do our wet ingredients. So three large eggs and a third cup of whole milk. Give that a whisk. Haven't tried this with almond milk or coconut milk, so can't vouch for the efficacy of it, but give it a shot. Why not? That's what this is all about, really is trying things you like, learning what you like. If it doesn't work, trying something else. I think in both life and dieting, people just give up too easily. They, they hit one speed bump and then they're like, oh, that's a sign. I shouldn't have bothered. I shouldn't have tried. I made a mistake. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, as they say in Colorado on the ski slopes, if you're not falling, you're not trying. So keep trying. Um, all right, ooh, and I almost forgot, so important, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Vanilla just makes everything better. Um, one thing that you can do, I don't do it with this blend because I use this blend for other stuff, but they do make a vanilla coconut sugar, vanilla flavored coconut sugar. And it's almost the same price as regular coconut sugar. So if you find yourself baking a lot, um, that might save you some money on vanilla. These are like 10 bucks, organic vanilla. Okay, uh, double check, I have all my ingredients. Another time I made this cake, I just completely forgot to add the sugar. And it was disgusting. And then just stir it together. There's no kind of like number of strokes or anything like that. You just want to mix this until it's blended. Okay, it's gonna look like that. You're gonna need a rectangle pan for this. Um, you can use a square pan, but you're just not gonna have foothills in front of your mountain if you use a square pan. So use a rectangle shaped pan. I'm making this in my toaster oven, which is perfect because this pan fits perfectly in my toaster oven. Uh, grease the bottom of the pan with a little coconut oil or butter if you have it. Any kind of oil you have is fine really. And that just makes it release a little bit easier. This is a pretty decent cake so I usually don't have any trouble. The reason why you want to line the pan will become obvious when I take it out of the oven and I show you how we're going to build the cake. Um, but make sure you line the pan. Pop it in your oven. Four 
15 minutes. I'll see you back here. All right, so our cake is done. And while we're waiting for it to cool off, it's literally cooling off in the fridge, um, I'm gonna make some chocolate frosting. And this frosting is, um, it's funny the ratios that you find on chocolate frosting um, on the internet, <laughs> they, they range. Um, this frosting only has a half a cup of powdered monk fruit sweetener. Um, a lot of frostings have like three cups of sweetener, which just seems bananas to me. Uh, you can certainly add more if you want. Um, find that powdered monk fruit sweetener, like there's really, it's really hard to find a substitute for powdered sugar unless it's a manufactured product. Um, so if you want to keep the carbs low, I recommend using um, powdered, I use Lakanto sugar-free. Um, there's like Bestie, there's a bunch of other um, substitutes. I don't have an opinion on like what flavor works best. You can also try using like half real powdered sugar and half erythritol if you like. Um, again, when you're starting to cut back on carbs, just start trying to cut back. Don't, don't try to think you gotta go cold turkey and you know, it's, it's okay to gradually reduce your reliance on sugar. It's totally fine. Um, feel free to use real frosting if you're making this for people who would freak out if you put an artificial sweetener in it. But for me, I try to keep my carbs down, so this is how I roll. Um, I use organic cocoa powder, um, and then uh, half and half. It's basically got like five ingredients and vanilla. So start out by beating the butter until it's white and fluffy. So the key with frosting is you want to beat the butter until it's almost white. Um, like it literally changes colors and starts to get a little more glossy and shiny. Uh, that for me took two minutes. And you're going to add a half a cup of erythritol. and a half a cup of cocoa. I actually like to do kind of a heaping cup of cocoa because I like chocolate. Teaspoon of vanilla. You've made as many cookies as I have. You can eyeball it. Gonna get very cloudy at first. <clears throat> Once it's blended, you can pick up the speed. And then this is where I like to add in my half and half. Start with a tablespoon and then see how you like the texture of the frosting.
This is looking pretty thick, so I'm going to add another tablespoon. Okay, so now we have our fluffy chocolate frosting. Um, I am going to put this into a piping bag because that makes it easier to assemble the cake. Um, rather, I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag with a hole cut in the corner. You don't have to get that fancy. Um, and I'll see you back here. To assemble this cake, we're going to take our cake out. It's nice and cool of the pan. And we're going to cut a square sized piece. Now you can measure this, but you know, I eyeball it. And then we're going to cut two more squares. like so. Now the beautiful thing about this pan is it always gives me two extra pieces that I can give to whoever's been watching me make this cake in eager anticipation of being able to have a bite. So you can set these aside, give them to a friend, but this is going to be your mountain and these are going to be your foothills. Now, the way I do this is I make this the inside and this the outside. So we're going to get our frosting, cut our edge off. And I really just do this to like make it easy and keep it from getting too messy. I'm not trying to pipe any designs or anything. You want to get like a layer like that in there and then very carefully get your other piece, put it on top. Press it down on in there. Fill it up. And then we're gonna stand it up on its side so you need a little glue here to kind of like hold it to the plate. It doesn't have to be pretty. No one's gonna see it. There you go. That's your mountain. Now, if you just made a square cake, you could cut it into thirds and just have one big triangle mountain. You could make it into 
a Giza pyramid, you could frost it with like a brown sugar frosting and put like, you know, fake sand on it. So it, you know, looks like a pyramid or whatever. But I've done this cake with a vanilla cake and cream cheese frosting, and then I put toasted coconut on top of it. Uh, you can get really, really fun and creative with it. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun cake, I find. And then for your foothills, They go like this. I don't worry so much about gluing the foothills because they sort of lean up against the mountain. So you don't really have to put anything on the bottom of them. They're usually the first to go anyway. And then this cake smells exactly like an Oreo cookie because of that dark double dutch cocoa. It's fantastic. Now, position your cake appropriately. I'm licking my fingers because it's really just me and my family that's going to eat this cake. Is that gross? And then now that you have your mountain cake assembled, you want to go ahead and frost the whole thing and then we're going to decorate it so I'll be back when we decorate it. Okay, so our chocolate cake is frosted. Um, that frosting recipe is enough to frost this whole cake. It might not seem like it at first. I find what helps is a warm butter knife. It helps you get the frosting pretty thin. So similar to like if you put an ice cream scoop in like a container of hot water, if you put a butter knife in a container of hot water, a couple of them, and then wipe it off in between frostings, it'll help you get that frosting layer pretty thin you want to have a super thick layer of frosting, feel free to double that recipe. Um, so now that we have our cake with our foothills, we're going to decorate it. I have a little miniature horse that is Darby's horse that got lost on the hill. So I'm going to put him right there. I also have some leprechaun gold <laughs> that I'm going to scatter on this cake um, around the front of it. And I have some St. Patrick's Day sprinkles, which add a minimal amount of carbs. I think that for the festivity, it's totally fine. I have decorated this cake before using like little toy goats or, um, you know, a bear with a fish in its mouth, uh, little toy plastic animals. And even when I do it for grownups, they love it. They think it's the neatest thing ever. And if all you want is like a mountain cake, you can sift powdered sugar over the top of this and it looks like snow. Um, you can sift cocoa and powdered sugar. I would, I would put them together. I would put like the cocoa first and then the powdered sugar on top of it. Uh, you can also toss a coconut with green food coloring and it looks like grass. There's all kinds of different ways that you can really get creative um, and imbue a sense of fun into eating healthy. Um, I wouldn't by any means call this healthy, but it is healthier. It's certainly a lot lower sugar than a cake that you can get at the store. So enjoy and um, subscribe for more tutorials like this that try to make eating low carb fun.